I would uh, move right on to Dr. Omran. Um, <coughs> how is Egypt faring with all the recent developments? Uh, please share your insights on key facts that global investors should know and any initiatives underway to build liquidity and drive increased trading volume. I think it would be good to also put this in the context of the fact that, uh, like Sunil was saying, there's, uh, people are being jittery around uh, emerging and frontier markets right now. Right. Uh, you, are, you are quite right. I mean, it's a tough time, Oscar. A very tough time. Uh, market witnessed some sort of uh, significant correction. Everybody is... Uh, is panic about the world economic growth, whether you, you mentioned that the world economy will grow by 3.3% instead of 3.5%, the slowdown in China, the expectation that the Fed will hike the interest rate might be sometime by the, uh, before the end of the year, and the impact of that on the capital flow, especially to emerging market, especially when we see the commodity prices are going down aggressively. So actually, it's, it's a very big, and complicated uh, issue, and nobody knows whether these things will be over shortly or it will take some time. And uh, I'm not saying that we will see something like in 2008, but we might have uh, some significant time before the market can perform in, 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 in a positive way, actually. This from my point of view. But however, having said that, I mean, I, I always believe when the war uh, uh, starts, there is no discrimination between army and civilian. And this is what's happening in the financial markets. When the, you have a, a panic investors, investors did not discriminate between good and bad market, between good and bad companies, between good and bad sectors. But when the dust is over and the war is over, <coughs> then the market that has been treated badly, they will start to regain confidence again. And I guess many of the emerging markets, especially in the African continent, they have the fundamentals to show that they can provide something for investors. If, if I come back to Egypt and what's happening in the latest development, actually, we are no different than many of the emerging markets. So the main index is suffering. I mean, I guess from the beginning <coughs> of the year until now, I think we lost around 16%. But I do not want to be very harsh on the Egyptian exchange because in the last three years, in 2012, we were growing by 48% our main index, in 2013, 24%, in 2014, 30%. So we're growing in the last three years in a very significant manner. This year, we are down 18%. But what is the good news in that? The good news is uh, if you look to the activity happening in the market, uh, in the last 12 months, we were able to list around 22 companies. In 2015, we have three IPOs. I guess we are the most active market in the MENA region in terms of IPOs. I think the IPOs in Egypt, in the 2015, we, the market was able to raise around $1 billion, which is considered a very significant amount uh, in the first half of 2015. We were expecting to continue having more IPO in the market before the year end, but again, I can see that two, three companies who were planning for IBO before the year, and they start to think about postponing that to see how the market will react, because nobody knows what is the things will develop in the, in the international financial market. Uh, what we are trying to do is to send a very confident message to the global investor in terms of the economic growth of the country. I mean, in the last three, four years, the Egyptian economy was growing by, on average, of two to 1.8 percent. Last year, the, we were growing by 4.3 percent, and uh, according to our budget and our planning, is that the year 2015-16, it is expected to have the GDP growth rate of 5 percent. Of course, the 5 percent is, is a target, but again, whether or not we will be affected by the global slowdown in the, the, in the, the economy, I mean, it's too early to tell, but of course, you, it will have some sort of impact on the expectation of the growth rate of the economy. But again, fundamentally speaking, I can believe that the Egyptian economy will be able to attract more investment from outside. You know, the, there are very strong infrastructure projects happening in Egypt. I mean, the, last August, it was the Swiss Canal Corridor, the new canal in Egypt, which is a very important for the world trade. Of course, the time was not very good, because <coughs> if, if you are expecting to have a slowdown in the economy, you would have 
to expect that you will have a slowdown in, in international trade that will affect the the performance of the Swiss Canal project. But I mean, again, if, if you are looking to the medium to long term, you would believe that the country is heading to a huge infrastructure project. Uh, uh, we are growing from a low level, so you will have a trend to have the five to and then to six percent next year. We are trying in the Egyptian exchange is to be a hub for financing the not only the private sector but also the government projects. And we believe that the stock change <coughs> is not only for the private, but also for state-owned enterprise. And it has been a while that we did not see privatization in Egypt, but recently we were able to convince the, go the, the, the government to uh, capitalize on the stock market as a mean of raising, raising capital for SOEs. And the idea is not only to raise capital, but also to use the stock market as transparency slot because we believe uh, the, uh, the people working in the financial market that SOEs is not owned by the government. It's owned by the citizen at large and the government is an agent to many of these companies. And I would like to see how these companies are performing and the best way is to put them in the stock market. So one way is more transparency, is an access to <laughs> finance, is for the citizen at large to monitor what's happening in this company. I get to recently we were able to list two state-owned companies from the petroleum sector, which is the first time to happen in 10 years since we stopped the privatization program. We are trying also, we in, in 2015 also, we have the first exchange trading fund, ETF, to be listed and traded in the Egyptian exchange. And according to the regulatory authority, we did pass a uh, legislation to allow for listing for the revenue bonds. And this is, will be very important for the infrastructure project. Just to, to sum uh, uh, my intervention, very optimistic about the, the potential performance of the Egyptian economy and the, the way it will be able to attract foreign direct investment, whether this is through the portfolio flow or through the FDI. But again, we need to be a little bit uh, realistic in our expectation because in the next two to three months, I guess it's very important, not only for Egypt, but for the world economy to know how the financial market will hit and how the world economy will behave in terms of this kind of simple. Let, let, me, let me stick with you for a second. So what you've just, the picture you just, just painted, is that reflective of the whole of North Africa or is it different? I just want... Uh, for Africa at large... No, North Africa, just North Africa. North, North Africa. North Africa. North Africa. Uh, but I'm not sure because if, if I look to the North Africa, I can see that Tunisia, for example, uh, they, they start to see a significant slowdown in their economy. And remember this area of the what is called <coughs> the Arab Spring. We have a problem in Libya next to Egypt. Uh, Tunisia was the starting point for Arab Spring. Uh, Spring. But you can see some of these countries, they start to see some sort of political stabilization. But again, when you have this stabilization in your political system and you start to grow in the economic front, then you are having the world economic problem. Whether or not will be affected, I guess we will, but to what extent, again, is too early to tell. Thank you very much. Doing business in Africa, you can't afford to be without Africa Investor.